So this is a topic I've had a really hard time talking to people about, but I think I can say it on the internet because regrets are often things that you can learn from and this channel is all about learning from all of the crap I went through. Um, so context about my time at Harvard is that I started off at NYU and then I actually transferred to Harvard after two years and then I did two and a half years at Harvard to finish my degree because I was studying completely different majors. I made a whole video about transferring tactically if that's something you're interested in, I will link it above. But all of that is to say, um, I already had like a fairly short amount of time at Harvard and I also joined after you know freshman and sophomore year. And the truth of the matter is, I did a really bad job of making strong and deep friendships while there. Someone gave me the advice before I transferred that you should spend like the first semester or year investing a lot of time into your friendships as opposed to your classes or extracurriculars because friendships require a lot of effort but then you can reap the benefits and rewards of friendships over long periods of time once you become like good friends with someone and I really did not take that advice because on one hand I would argue I couldn't and I'll give you a long list of reasons or excuses as to how this all happened um, and you can judge for yourself whether you would have done the same thing as me but yeah, the, the truth of the matter is I did a really, really bad job of making good friends at Harvard. There was this video that was popular when I was like a kid, like when YouTube was just starting. It was like one of the first viral videos. Um, and it talks about like regret and essentially people across like New York City or something wrote on a board whatever they regretted in life. And the most common word on the board was not or didn't or some negative word, essentially meaning that people regret the things they did not do, not really the things that they did do. And for me, I can go on and on about an endless list of things that I did not do at Harvard that I wish I did, like the parties you didn't go to or the events you didn't attend or the extracurriculars you didn't join and the people therefore you didn't meet. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me viscerally explain to you what it feels like and how I know that I did not make really strong friendships at Harvard. I'm going to split this into what it felt like while at Harvard and what it feels like now that I've graduated. In terms of at Harvard, um, I never really had, or I had social anxiety, but I've never had like as severe social anxiety as I did towards the end of my time at Harvard. When you transfer for the first like six months, or actually when you join any new community for the first six months, you have a lot of excuses to make friends because you're like, oh, I'm new, like I just got here, and people are really open to being friends with you. This is particularly true like freshman year when everyone is in the same boat, but it's also true when you're just new, because I was just like one of the only new people. Um, but eventually, like that stops working as an excuse. So in my first year, I lived in a much smaller house, like uh, upperclassmen live in these the same house sophomore through senior year. I transferred into a small house and so by the end of the year by being pretty social I actually felt really comfortable going to the dining hall and like sitting with people but then I transferred to a bigger house for roommate reasons not because I didn't love my first house and that was when like the social anxiety really got to me because what it feels like to not have friends or not to, okay, not to have not to have friends but what it feels like to not have great friends is to feel anxious every time you think about a meal. You're like, who am I gonna eat lunch with? Who am I gonna eat dinner with? And one of the ways you get around it is by planning lots of dinners and like lunches. But if you ever just like ad hoc go into the dining room and you're like, where do I sit? You're like, oh wow, I actually like don't know anyone and I don't have like anyone that I would feel comfortable sitting with. I also think a really tough sentiment that shows you my lack of good friendships or like deep friendships at Harvard is People who, let's say I was to name like the top 10 closest people to me, if they were to name the top 10 closest at school, I would not be on that list. And I think it's a really tough position when you're like, I'm, you, I feel very close to you, but if you would not put me on a close friendship list. That's what it feels like while at school and obviously that creates a lot of anxiety. So what inspired me to make this video is I just went back for a delayed graduation and it got me thinking a lot about you know, what does Harvard and Harvard people mean to my life now? And honestly, as an adult, I still have a lot of anxiety around my Harvard adult friendships. By the way, I'm gonna make a whole separate video on adult friendships because they warrant, that is like a complicated topic, 
But in particular, the two ways I feel anxiety, the first was that it got really severe when I was going back for graduation because I was like, wow, who do I want to see? Is there anyone that would think to reach out to me to like see me this weekend? Who would I take photos with? Like there's no roommate dinners that I'm going to go to. There's no people that will feel excited to see me again or looking forward to being in the same city as me again. That's what it feels like, again, to have not made super strong friends during that part of my college career. And even in my day to day, I don't live anywhere near Boston, um, but even in my day to day, I still think about the fact that I don't have a lot of friends from Harvard within my like close friendship circles. I think a good heuristic for this as an adult is who would you invite to your birthday or who would you invite to your part to a party that you're throwing? And for me, it's like a lot of NYU people and the friendships I made there. It's maybe people from other parts of my life, but it's not really Harvard people. And the thing is, I feel so bad about that because it's completely not their fault. I just did a really bad job of investing the time and effort into those friendships. Um, and I'm paying the consequence of it now. All is not lost, but this is the truth. Now I'm going to go into a list of reasons how I got into this position to begin with. Maybe you will empathize with some of these things or see in yourself some of these themes and hopefully find a way to turn it around. So the first few things are pretty specific to if you transferred. The first is as a result of transferring, you miss freshman and or freshman and sophomore year, which was my case. And freshmen are the most willing to make friends and usually people try and solidify their friendship groups by then because you know we're pack animals and like we want to feel comfortable in a group and with people. And so by missing those two years, that was pretty hard on me. The second thing is at Harvard, there's these things called blocking groups, which are essentially the, more or less the people you live with or the people you live close to. You decide these freshman year and I didn't get put into a blocking group, obviously, because I wasn't there. Some transfers actually transfer into effectively a blocking group. Um, I transferred into a roommate situation or multiple roommate situation that was really not positive. And so as a result, that didn't become like a safety of stable friends that I could just like naturally transfer into. That was not the case for me. And then the third thing I've already alluded to, which is I changed houses um, which is pretty uncommon at Harvard. And whenever you change houses or move into a new community, you have to do a lot of stuff from scratch again. And I just didn't have the time and didn't put in the effort to make that really work out. My fourth excuse or reason is because COVID hit in the middle of my senior year. So I lost effectively a semester and a half um, of time with people. That was really hard for whatever classes ended up hitting COVID. Um, the fifth thing is that I got into a relationship very quickly during my first semester at Harvard and still with that person now, obviously one of the best things to happen to me from Harvard. But the truth of the matter is, at least I find that when you're in a relationship, you have such a stable safety net with that person because it's someone you can always talk to that you don't need to invest as much into other social safety nets, such as your friends or other people that you meet. Because if you always have someone at the end of every day to be like, this is what I did today and here's how I'm feeling, those same conversations would otherwise happen with friends or other people in your life. And that's not something I would change about relationships, but I think that's something that I've always found while being in one. So my number one excuse that I like to make as to why I didn't have like super strong friendships was because I transferred into a major that I had never studied before that also is extremely time consuming and that major uh, is computer science. Computer science is super time consuming at Harvard, particularly if you're just like not super hot at it or like you just need to put a lot of effort to do well in it, which was me. Now that might sound like a good excuse but I actually think the way that I could have mitigated this problem, which I did not, was I had this really odd mentality, um, which is that while Harvard feels like an end game to a lot of high school students, like in high school, you're like, wow, wouldn't it be so cool to go there? Once you're there, there's this weight, at least for me, of at the time of, okay, well now that I'm here, I need to take advantage of all these opportunities so that I can become great 
like Harvard students were supposed to be. And that mentality is really forward thinking. Like you're always thinking about who you're going to become and what you need to do to get there. And therefore your time at Harvard starts to look more like a stepping stones as opposed to the end state. And so this mentality I think is actually fairly common in Harvard's culture in that people are always racing to like be somebody and to do really great things. And it's hard to remember to stop and smell the roses. Now, a mentality I think is super dangerous and one that I got into during my time is this just feeling of like you need to get to the end of the day or you need to get to the end of the semester or you need to get to this like end of some goal. For example, one of the major goals in college for me was to find a great job at the end and if that, if you were not going to relax until you got to the end goal, well, by the time you hit that end goal, you've already graduated. A more minor example of this is let's say you're taking a class you really are struggling with or you don't like or whatever. You just think to yourself, okay, this week I need to get through piece at one and then piece at two and then piece at three. And then by the end of the semester, I'm going to finish the final exam. And finally, like, thank God I'm done with that class. That class was so hard. Well, if you do that a few times, that's every semester and that's your entire college experience. So essentially this mentality of I need to get past something or get through something or to get, get to something makes it really, really hard to live in the moment, which is by the way, where all happiness lives. It's very important to remember that happiness literally does not exist in the future and it cannot exist in the past. It only exists in the now. So if you ever want to be a happy person, you need to learn how to be happy right now. And finally, my last excuse that I told myself, which sounds logical, but probably was wrong, was um, because I was going to be at Harvard for a fairly short amount of time, my strategy was to meet a ton of people because then I could make friends with them afterwards and spend more time with them afterwards, as opposed to going really deep with very few friendships because I knew my time at Harvard was limited, both because I transferred and also because I was studying something that took up a lot of time. And I'd say this is incorrect because in a lifetime, if you have like a handful of really good friends, that is what community means to you. That's what brings so much joy in your life. The fact that you know like a thousand people probably is not what makes you happy. So all is not lost. This is not necessarily a sad video because the future is unwritten. And so um, if you will indulge me, let me give a little piece of advice or wisdom to these three groups of people. The first group of people is if you are still in college. If you are still in college, I hope you know that you are so lucky because you still have time, this magical time in your life when you have very few responsibilities, relatively speaking, but a lot of freedom and just a lot of amazing people who live literally feet or blocks away from you. I hope you learn from my mistake and I hope you watch this video every time you're like freaking stressed about finals or paper and remember that the most important thing about everything and the only thing you will ever remember about your life is the memories and the experiences you had with people. That's it. You will never ever remember the difference between an A minus and an A on a class. It will never matter whether you got an 89 or a 92. It will never matter and you will rem never remember those nights of studying unless you were studying with people you really loved and had like some fun experience there. You are so lucky to still have this time. I hope every time you forget about that because you're worried about getting a job, because you're worried about doing well on an exam, because you're worried about being a good student or whatever, you come back and watch this video and see how much regret I have. And in order to avoid that regret, you decide to go on that crazy adventure, which I promise you will never ever regret doing. To the second group of people, which is people who knew me at Harvard. First of all, why are you watching this video? How did you get here? Um, but if you happen to stumble upon this, I just want to say that I'm sorry I wasn't a better friend. I should have put more effort and time into doing those fun things, going to the events that you invited me to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I do regret it, but there's still time. And so I promise that I will put in concerted effort and time into being a better friend making those memories, having a lot of fun. So yeah, hit me up if you are around. Finally, to this third group of people, which is people who relate to this video slash myself. Hello, Mary. Um, the funny thing is you've been through this before. 
Uh, I actually went to a high school that really taught me that the value of life is really just the experiences you have with people. I haven't talked much about high school, this high school. I'll talk about it in the future um, because I'm actually going back to visit. But you've made this mistake before. You've also learned this lesson before. And somehow I managed to really not apply that to my time at Harvard, which just goes to show you even though we know the right answer is to live in the moment and that that's all you have, it's actually very hard to do in practice. But I hope that I have learned my lesson now that this is going to be the third time because when I am 80 years old, I really hope I am not making this goddamn same video again. Instead, I hope I say that I knew that happiness does not exist in the future or the past, it only exists in the now and the only thing that matters is the experiences you have with people and I will try my very best to live true to that every day from now on or, you know, every day just generally. Despite my lack of eloquence, I hope I put into words a feeling that I think honestly a lot of people have. Um, I think as an adult or just as a person, it's very easy to feel ashamed or embarrassed about like having not feeling like you have super strong social connections or not having enough social connections. There's just a lot of social anxiety around this topic, AKA why do all my friends have more friends than me sort of topic. Um, but know that a lot of people feel this way and also that you can always change and we can always grow and we can have more fruitful communities, which is ultimately the secret to happiness. So, also, maybe you can relate that despite being a very social person, which I consider myself and I think a lot of people who look at me would think, um, everyone can feel this way. Anyways, um, if you relate to this at all, let me know. Tell me your story. Tell your story to random people on the internet. Um, and yeah, I just want to say that this channel, I know people are on YouTube are like, you have to niche down. So far, I don't really have a niche other than the fact that this is just a capsule of the things I wish my younger self knew and I'm so thankful that it can be just stored on this magical internet for other people to find and I'm so thankful that people like you indulge me in watching this. So, see you in my next video.